The SIG M17, let's check it out. Guys, when the U.S. military is looking to replace an existing sidearm or rifle, a lot of people take note. There's a lot of interest. And a lot of gun companies scrambled to get their chance to be the official issued sidearm for the U.S. military. We just recently had the modular handgun systems trials. Uh, there were certain criteria that were looked for, and a number of different companies came in with some really cool offerings. Uh, guys, I'm telling you, we live in the golden age of firearms, and there were a lot of great handguns that were on this list. But at the top came the SIG M17, and it's just a variant of the P320, which is an excellent handgun in itself. Early on, they did have some issues where uh, if you dropped it, you know, at a certain angle, they would go off, but SIG fixed that. And then right behind it came the Glock G19X, which is another excellent handgun and the FN, the Beretta, I mean there's a whole list of different firearms that we as civilians have been able to glean and benefit from these trials. And so a lot of these guns have been offered, but SIG now has offered the official winner, the M17. Now, Nate at Gun Pro Deals sent the M17 for this test and evaluation, and I appreciate their support. Uh, it did come with one of the Leupold uh, Delta Point Pro red dot sights or RMRs uh, and that is going to be the sight that the US military has chosen for the M17. Now the official name of the M17 is actually the P320 M17 and of course it's based on the SIG P320 which has been a very popular striker fire handgun for SIG but there are some differences between this and the standard P320. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, you do get two 17 round magazines with the FDE base plate uh, and then of course these are FDE as well. Uh, and then check make sure that the gun is unloaded. Now one of the things you're going to notice right up front is this black plate. Uh, this is a removable plate. Uh, it's for the Leupold Delta Point Pro which is a an RMR style uh, reflex sight and it goes right here. One of the things the military wanted was uh, the ability to be able to use the reflex sights if they wanted to go that route. But this is dedicated, in fact the cuts are made for the Leupold only. Uh, I think that SIG is coming up with an adapter plate so they can put one of their SIG Romeos on here. You'll also notice that there is a manual safety and it is ambidextrous on either side. In fact the slide stop is also ambidextrous and there's front and rear cocking serrations. This is a PVD finish and it is of course in the desert color um, and you know it's just a really military looking firearm. Uh, one of the things though about the original M17s that were delivered to the 101st Airborne were that these controls were actually in a PVD coating as well just like the slide and here we have the black. Uh, I don't know if that's what they're going to later, but that was what the first guns were shipped as. Uh, it does have the three dot SIG sights, and of course this sight is built into the plate. I do have one of the Leupold Delta Point Pros, show you how that thing fits. Uh, there's a couple of things to consider, uh, but it's a very nice sight system that's on here, but you do get your red dot sight. It does have the Picatinny rail, squared off trigger guard. Uh, one of the things, though, about this handgun that's, again, very similar to the P320 is that it has a modular frame, and the system inside, the trigger system, uh, is a chassis that comes out, and you can exchange the frames uh, for different sizes. So there's no back straps or extra back straps. You just get the frame that you want. 
and I believe this is the medium frame, uh, but again, it comes in large and a small. And that was one of the requirements by the U.S. military, is to have that modularity. Uh, the chassis that's in here was not a requirement, but it really was an added bonus when it came to the SIG. The second runner-up was the Glock G19, and this is an excellent handgun. I love it. There's a lot of people that were very disappointed. In fact, Glock even filed a lawsuit against the U.S. military uh, for not choosing the Glock because of some things that went on. But here's the thing, guys. Now, the SIG P320 M17 is the official U.S. military sidearm. Now, SIG has just released their Bravo model, which is completely black, but otherwise the exact same handgun. And then there's also the commemorative model, which has the PVD finish, but it has the original PVD coated controls all throughout. And so those are just some variations of really the same pistol. The barrel is 4.7 inches in length. It's 8 inches long. It's 5.5 inches high. And it's 1.3 inches in width. And so it's a full-size handgun. Uh, and that's one of the things, though, that the P320 had was the different modular systems. You could get different sizes. You could switch out the slides. You could switch out the frames. And so, again, it was very modular. But this particular handgun was designed to be like the M17. It does have a 1913 Picatinny rail. And you can see the serrations. They're good and they're solid. Uh, you know, you can grab them very easily. And it does have an abbreviated slide stop, very similar to just the size of the Glock. Uh, and then, of course, you have your takedown lever here, which we're going to look at in just a minute. But one of the things about the G19X is it does not have the RMR cuts uh, like we do on the SIG M17. Uh, it's a little bit of a smaller pistol as well. Uh, and so still same round count, but it is a little shorter, a little more compact. But this is the 19 size slide or the compact slide on a G17 frame or full size frame. And so you've got just some differences there. Uh, but I'll tell you, if I was in the U.S. military making these decisions, it would have been a tough decision because there were a lot of really excellent handguns that were offered. And the great news is, is a lot of these handguns, just like the G19X, are being offered to the civilian market. Now, the PVD finish is over a stainless steel slide. Now, we're going to remove the magazine. I'm going to double check to make sure the gun is unloaded. We're going to look at the trigger action. Here we have a little bit of take up, just not far at all. And then we have our snap or our break. It's not super crisp. It's more like your standard striker fire pistols. Uh, I would consider this very similar as far as in sponginess to the Glock, actually. Um, and so we're going to recheck for reset right about there. We're going to check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. Five pounds, 15 ounces. Five pounds, 11 ounces. Five pounds, 7.8 ounces. Now, while the M17 does have your manual safety here, and again, it is ambidextrous, uh, they are coming out with models that do not have the mounted frame safety, according to SIG, according to the SIG website. Uh, your magazine release, which is large, it's, it's a triangular shape, and it drops those magazines. In fact, it ejects the magazines pretty well. Uh, it's fairly easy to switch over to the other side. One thing, though, that I noticed was after shooting it a little bit, um, I did notice that at the range that there seemed to be some wear on the slide. And I had seen a couple of reviews where they were talking about some wear, excessive wear. Uh, once I took some oil, some gun oil, and just rubbed it, all of those little places just went away. And so I don't know that it was just uh, wear from just the lead or whatever, but I mean, there was definitely some places on the high spot that I was a little bit concerned about. But again, once I kind of cleaned it up, there were no problems. Now to me, the grip on the SIG, especially if you get the size that fits your hand, whether it's the, the small, medium, or large, uh, but even the large to me, even though I like the smaller grips, uh, this fits my hand very well. Uh, the one thing, though, is that it is somewhat of a little bit of a higher bore axis. And once you put the RMR on top, especially the Leupold, it's a little bit high. But it's actually easier to find the red dot than a lot of the other sites that I've used. I want to thank Fioki for sponsoring the ammo. We're using 115 grain full metal jacket, and this is all made in the USA.
One of the things I noticed when I took the pistol down to the range is the mild recoil. Now, I think a lot of that has to do with the way the recoil system, the guide rod, and that flat recoil spring are in this pistol. And there is a really good balance to the handgun. Uh, we definitely wanted to shoot it with just the sights on the back, the, the regular iron sights. And of course these are tritium uh, and the sights were excellent, easy to pick up. The dot on the front has a white outline so it makes it nice. But obviously we wanted to shoot it with the Leupold Delta Point Pro. That is the optic that the U.S. military chose for this handgun. And again, like we talked about, this cut is only for the Leupold sight. And really, this has been my first experience with the Leupold. I mean, and it's got a really nice, large field of view. Um, I was really pleased with the way it shot. Uh, it seems like it's a little higher than the RMR, so I had to adjust just a little bit because I'm really sh used to shooting the RMR, the Trigicon RMR. Those are excellent, very rugged um, reflex sights. But with the Delta Pro, I was able to really get a good, clear f field of view uh, it shot well. I think that's really where the market's going. Uh, we're going to see more and more of those optics on our handguns. But the one thing that I was very pleased about was the accuracy. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to take this plate off and replace it with the Delta Point Pro. And we're going to go ahead and disassemble the handgun. First thing we do is remove our magazine, check to make sure the gun is unloaded, bring it to the rear position and engage your slide stop, take your lever and pull it all the way down. Now you don't have to pull the trigger and in fact if you pull the trigger you may have some trouble entering your magazine. So go ahead and drop your slide, bring it out. Uh, we have this flat recoil spring which does mitigate recoil. Uh, and I've noticed that, especially with the HK, that was one of their designs to, uh, to help with felt recoil. And we do have a steel guide rod. Have your barrel, and again, it's 4.7 inches. It is cold hammer forged and uh, the browning linkless design. Now, you can see inside, I have not cleaned it, and uh, we did get quite a bit of residue in here. We shot about 400 rounds through the handgun, and uh, it just functioned very well. We had no malfunctions at all. Um, and then here you can see your striker assembly. Uh, again, kind of similar to your standard Glock. One of the things though is this frame does remove and you can pull this out and uh, we may just go ahead and pull this on out. It's very simple to do. Gotta, let's go make sure I get my trigger over the uh, trigger housing. But uh, this is what is considered to be your handgun. And you can actually insert this into a number of different frames, except that you have your safeties here and you'd need those cuts. So uh, that is one thing to consider. But um, again, this is your handgun. You can get different colors. You can get different modular frames, uh, typically with the SIG P320. And I'm sure they'll expand this for the Model M17. But guys, honestly, you don't have to remove this to field strip, but it makes it nice. And really, it's not that difficult. Now we're going to reinsert our chassis. You have a lip here at the back and it goes down into a groove in the frame. And if you don't get that just right first, it makes it a little difficult. Take your trigger. I go ahead and push it forward to make it clear. And then it just slides down into the frame. I mean, that is really simple. Okay, now inserting your takedown lever, there's a little bar right there. So you're going to need to make sure that you get past it to get that end back in. There we go. It took me just a few seconds to get this lever lined up and it was difficult with the camera. You just need to get it, kind of adjust it and fish until it actually fits flush, just like this. Take your barrel, replace it, recoil spring and guide rod. Of course, the color toward the uh, end of the barrel or the front of the barrel. Engage our slide stop, bring it around, and we're done. Go ahead and insert our magazine, test for function, and we're good. Now we're going to install the Leupold Delta Point Pro uh, and this handgun was designed for the Leupold. In fact, that is the cut that's here. So once we remove this plate, this will fit right in. Uh, from what I understand, SIG is going to be offering the Romeo like we talked about. Uh, one of the things I do want to mention about the uh, Leupold is that there is an option to put an, a sight right here on the back. If you do that, you've got to put suppressor height sights on the front to be able to see that sight. 
So first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove that plate, but you've got to do it from the underneath. And to do that, we're going to need a punch and a 3 seconds hex wrench. There are two screws holding in your sight plate, uh, but the extractor comes down and it blocks access to that screw. So what we have to do is remove our back slide plate. And so just depress the extractor plunger and then pull off your back slide plate, taking ease because that is under spring tension. Once you get it loose though, it relieves the tension. Now pull out your extractor plunger and then your extractor, if you have it turned over, it'll just fall out. So go ahead and pull it out. Next, take your 3 seconds hex wrench and just loosen those screws. Then your plate comes off just like this, but be careful because those screws will fall out underneath. This is your loaded chamber indicator right here. There is a small spring under here, and I'm going to go ahead and show it to you. You can see it right there, and it's not attached. Uh, you've got to be very careful with that spring. In fact, I lost it at the range when I was switching out the sights, and I'm not even still not sure how I found it. I think a lot of prayer, <laughs> but just be careful with that. Keep it in place. The great thing is the Delta Point Pro just fits on top and you can take it on and off from the top of the slide. Then we have the TP10. This allows us to get those screws in place. And it wouldn't hurt to put some Loctite on these screws. Now we're going to replace our plunger. You'll notice this little shelf and it fits right here on the back of your extractor. So the first thing we're going to do is, is go ahead and insert our extractor with that round disc part toward the back. And then we'll insert our plunger with that little cut inside, toward the inside. Next, depress your striker housing and then just get your back slide plate started. But before you push it all the way through, go ahead and depress your plunger. And then you can bring that slide plate right up and then you can release your plunger. If this plunger is sticking up a little bit, you've missed the back slide plate holding it in. It's not really that big of a deal to do, just a few details. Now we have the Delta Point Pro on here. Uh, let's, you, can, you can see that dot and it is a good solid dot. Of course, it's not going to focus. But guys, this is a large window. It makes it really nice. Uh, it does have a metal sleeve that comes all the way over that's steel over your aluminum. So um, we may just take a good look at this site uh, in a future review. But I think, in fact, I might just compare this to the RMR because I have a lot of experience with the RMR. You can add one of the SIG attachments that is a site that just comes right off the back. Again, you do need to replace these with suppressor height sites. Then of course you can add one of your Olight PL2 and FDE, which again, these are limited edition. <laughs> Hopefully Olight will be releasing these again because it really looks good on these handguns. Um, and then they also offer these 21 round magazines. It does extend a little bit down, but it makes it really nice to have that extra capacity. And then if you want the flush fit, you've got that in 17 rounds. We're going to take a dummy round, put it in a magazine. Here you'll notice right here, there's a rise in this little piece. And we showed that when we were installing the uh, Leupold uh, Delta Point Pro. And this is going to just right, bring that up just a touch. And here it is removed, and it's just flat. That is one thing that the original SIG P320 does not have. And so that's definitely an addition. Here are the dummy rounds in the standard P320. You can see there's just a little bit of a rise with the extractor. But with the dummy round removed, it's really not that much of a difference. In fact, it's pretty much non-existent. This is the SIG P320. It's actually in the compact version. The frame is compact in the slide. You can see that there is a definite difference. Uh, there is a full size, but this is the one that I have. Just wanted to show you a couple of the differences, which are not much. Uh, one is, of course, your frame safety, which is right here. Uh, the other is, and I put the Delta Pro on here just so you can see that you've got the capability of putting a sight, which you don't on the standard P320. Uh, the other thing is there's a different cut right here for your serial number. So that's just a little bit of a difference. 
but otherwise there's not really any difference except for the loaded chamber indicator that we demonstrated. So again, I want to thank Gun Pro Deals for sending the M17 for this test and evaluation and their sponsorship. It's great to be able to get a lot of different type guns and really not be beholden to any one company. Uh, that way, you know, we can really talk about the quality and also the deficits of this handgun. So guys, if you're looking for a full-size 9mm handgun, one that the U.S. military has chosen and has just tons of features, take a look at the SIG M17, which is the P320. Um, just an excellent handgun, very modular, and uh, guys, you can do about anything with this handgun. Guys, I'll tell you, this looks like something out of Rainbow Six or Black Ops. <laughs> be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. to get their chance here with the dummy round and the standard pick it's based on the pick. whoops and uh, I think you'll be very pleased with this handgun okay now nah, now nah, I don't do that putting on the Leupold uh, Delta Plus putting on the Leupold whatever the <laughs>